Hey there, welcome to Jersey Jim Fish, Fishmonger Jim here. Today I'm going to be boning some shad. Alright, so this is a, I made this, this is a, uh, a shad row knife. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, it's got a hook and a very blunt, non-sharpened part right here. You could use a Swiss Army knife or any other knife to do this I will show you how to do it it's not it's not rocket science so behind this fin here if you look great jaw right there the skin is really thin so if you get your shad boning knife or Swiss Army knife I'll do it with the Swiss Army knife after there's no necessity to cut as close to the belly as possible in fact right about here it actually works pretty well and you want to keep that this part parallel to the cutting board and lift up as you as you zip back and cut through cut through the uh, the rib bones and not the membrane that is on the row sack so after you get there so use this knife because it's wickedly sharp you cut the membrane seeing this yeah you see that membrane right there you just cut that membrane right and then after you cut through some of the membrane get your finger get your finger in there and you run you separate the membrane on the lower the lower side I'm, my hook is my, my finger is hooked and then you go up towards the towards the neck towards the uh, the head and then when you get right about here you pinch the goots and then you pull back a lot of times these fish are like whatever whatever their last meal was it rots in their belly and <sighs> yeah these things have to be really quite fresh they have to be very very fresh not not more than two three days out of the water for the rosettes to be really bright and clean in flavor not a big fan of the rosettes to be honest with you but that one doesn't look too bad this right here i mean if you're purchasing if you catch it it's something different like you you process it that night or the day after but that right there that little bit of greenish gray that is not white you know you can't you can't wipe it off that right there means that this fish is is probably four days old he's still decent but yeah that right there see that that's uh that's a sign of an old or and not necessarily old but a fish that has been um has you know, like whatever's in their belly has spoiled and it doesn't smell too good it doesn't look real good and the idea behind not cutting through that, that membrane is that these are typically fried. Uh, you know, dredged in flour, wrapped in bacon, put on top, of, on top of the stove in oil. And when there's a break in it like that, when you put it in the oil, it pops. Like it, it sprays, it sprays uh, oil out at you. Hang on a minute. I gotta get a container for these. I will, uh, I will likely be giving these row sets to Jigs, so I'm sure he would appreciate them. And like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of the row sets. They're, uh, it's an acquired taste. I, ha I haven't acquired the <laughs> taste for it at all. Maybe I'll try one. You know, give it another whirl. Uh, after you get it to this point and. That's pretty sloppy. You don't want to do that, but oh my God. I have no hose in my kitchen, so after you get there, you want to cut. There's no if you if you go up around the head and you try to get all the meat, you know, like harvest as much of the fish of the fish as you possibly can. You're going to be creating problems for yourself. So you kind of just want to cut it right behind the gills, cut it straight down. But don't cut the head off, and then you turn it, 
and then you rip the knife backwards to the aid. It's kind of kind of mirroring mirroring the cut that we made on that side. I'll try to get that. I'll try to keep that juice in the pocket because I really don't want it on my cutting board. Oh, or on my floor. Eh, too bad. It's on your floor, Jim. And then, well, you want to cut the tail, right? And again, you don't want to cut it way back here. You want to cut it kind of, kind of forward, kind of right about here. Cut the tail off. And then, the bloodline. So there should be a nice white, oh yeah, there it is. Nice white membrane or, or bluish membrane right there. You want to cut on the north side of that and then scrape. All right, and if this fish was only two days old instead of four, I was on the fence about whether or not to buy this. But I really, really want to have um, I really want to have uh, another movie about how to bone shad on my channel. And shad is is an incredibly good eating fish. So we're giving that a rinse right now. You can't see it. Take my word for it. I'm rinsing it off. I'm going to clean up in between each step. However, I probably won't clean the board because the other fish probably has the uh, the same uh, nasty in the belly cavity. But that is what you want this step to look like. Nice and clean. No bloodline. Easy to see. Tail cut, head cut, kind of square. Just put that over there. Show you that again. So if you didn't have a, a fancy Jersey Jim, uh, one of them, you could use a Swiss Army knife. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm really glad that's that's relatively clean. I wasn't quite sure when I picked it up what was the last thing I cut with it, or the last 20 or 30 things I cut with it. So you get the tip just the tip and only for a minute or a second you get the tip in there and you lift up you see how that that lump is coming out that's vitally important when you're harvesting these row sets oh that's a really nice looking row set if there ever was such a thing uh get the tip of the knife up so you don't cut through that membrane until you're in this step right here see that and then you get your Get your, your hooked finger in there. You pull that out. They had some shad there that had like really, really large row sets, judging by the girth of the fish. And I selected the two with the small, <laughs> the smallest row sets because really I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. I just like the fillet. The fillet is absolutely amazing. Boneless, that is. I've never baked one. Maybe the next movie I make, I'll bake one. All right, so we got a little blow through here from uh, spoilage. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit nasty right there. We rinse this off, and we're gonna go ahead and do this. Oh, I'll show you. Hang on. Again, tail. Right about jaw. Head. That camera's kind of in the way. Right about there. Cut down, don't cut through, and then rip back. And that's the piece you want to take off. This would probably be really, really good giant striped bass bait. Shad head, absolutely. And then, okay, so here's the here's the membrane that hasn't been spoiled from time on ice in a box, and you want to come down the entire bloodline. Scrape it out, and then there's a sub bloodline right there that you want to cut as well, and that'll that'll become relevant in a minute. In a minute. Let me uh, let me rinse this off, clean my board, and then we'll be on the next step. This might be a this might be a quick movie, probably not, but maybe. All right. At this stage. It's very important to have everything pretty dry. 
Like the sooner you can dry everything off, the less trouble you'll have. What is that? The less trouble you have moving forward. So again, with the shad, it's not it's not about getting all the meat that you possibly can off of it. Normally, uh, what would be the head to the right, shoulder to the edge of the board, and I'd come in as close as tight to this fin as possible. With the shad, it's kind of different. It's kind of different. You want to go above the spine, right? And go above the spine and level the knife and just draw back just like that it's called the uh, racking All right just like that and if you do it right the rib bones shouldn't be attached on the front edge here I'll show you how to deal with that after if they are and then the other side same same kind of dealio the length of that oh this stuff is so good the greatest the best part of this fish is actually this part right here so if you notice there's a fair amount of meat on both sides of that uh, well last time I did this it took me a really long time and I was absolutely hammered by the end of the, <laughs> by the, end of the movie it's one of the movies it's one of the reasons why I want to redo this movie and not be hammered by the end of it maybe I think Dylan's coming over tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll cook some of this for him. He would really, really thoroughly enjoy it, not knowing at all what it's all about. So if you grab the skin, you separate the skin on the north side of this, and you just pull up the the fin bones, dorsal fin. They come right out, right? And then you cut between the vertebra. Not with your good knife, but kind of sort of like that. Cut through there, and then probably another cut there. And you snap it in half, and then you pull. You pull the pieces apart. And that is, you just mash this into corn seasoned cornmeal and fry it. And man, I'll tell you what. I would rather eat this than that. Well, I mean, I, yeah, it's it's really quite good. If you never try, you'll never know. And then again, this bottom fin, just pinch the skin and then pull out and all those bones come right out. So yeah, I'll show you how to eat that. I'm gonna save it, I bought it. Asian market's awesome. These two fish were these two fish, habaneros, and some onions, $25. And when I say habaneros, I don't think they, I don't think they're habaneros. I think they might be ghost peppers or, or some ridiculously hot pepper. Because I'm a big fan of the, the habaneros and these things. So it keeps me going back. They are wickedly, wickedly hot. These habaneros that they have at the Asian market. They have some other odd, really odd items there. I thoroughly enjoy going in there to, to see what they have. And uh, wonder what the hell they do with some of this stuff. I'll put a, I'll put a couple pictures here. from I've been going into the Asian market for the last three days four days something like that to see when they get their their fresh fish in see when they replenish their stock of shad and yeah i've seen some i've seen some pretty amazing stuff there just in the last four days and i go there you know, probably twice a month for having euros if i put a picture right there was i wrong by saying, what the hell would you do with that besides eat it? And how could you possibly eat something like that? Yeah, that's it. That's the racks. And then these pieces, I'm going to go ahead and trim the belly off of, off of this one because it's kind of soft. 
and then like I said, I um, just got home from work. I'm still in my work clothes, uh, as you could, you might not be able to imagine. I, I smell kind of terrible, like fish. It's in the cutting room for a good seven hours today. All right, so the, uh, those bones, the, uh, rib bones, called rib bones, Jim. Rib bones, you want to take them off. You don't have to do it right now, but like I said, it's kind of soft. So if you have any rib bones that attach to the center bones, so these are pin bones here. If you have any rib bones that are attached to these center bones, you want to go underneath the rib bones and come out towards the center of the fillet. If you try going in this way, you're going to tear it up and you're going to you're going to have trouble on the next uh 20 or 30 steps. <laughs> it's a very time-consuming process, but shad is absolutely delicious. If you've never had it and if you have any skill with a knife or you you see it and you kind of have an idea of the quality or, or freshness of it. Give it a whirl, man. It, it is... It's in my... I would say it's in my top three. Shad. Get rid of that. I don't know if there's any bones in there, but I don't want to deal with them at the next step. There we go. I guess I might as well cut the, the rib bones out of the other pieces, too, while I'm at it, eh? So, the uh, 2333, the idea behind this knife is that it's long. This is the dullest part of the knife. So you don't want to cut with that part of the knife. You want to you want to draw back. Make sure you're on underneath all the bones. And when, you, when you're under them, you press down like this. And that brings the knife really close to the surface. I, I get it. I used to cut these things by the 60-pound box, these shad fillets. I'm not quick at it, but I am really, really, really quite efficient at it. I've had uh, people that I've asked, tell me, please, tell me, give me some feedback, customers. Were there any bones in it? Oh, no, it was absolutely, completely boneless. So it takes some time, but... It's, uh, it's doable. I can do it. I can do it. It must be easy if I can do it. All right, just like that. Now you see that? See how it's kind of broken through? Gut, gut shot. That's what that's called. The seafood industry. That is from something rotting in this, this, this fish's belly. Or from it being old. Not necessarily from it being old. There's some, there's some things that rot in the fish's belly. Um, that make it spoil a whole lot faster. Uh, you notice I'm grabbing this knife to cut into the board and this knife to cut through the flesh. This knife is it's got a really really fine finesse edge. That's what you need to process the shed. Alright so if you're doing any number of these, and I, I can imagine that if you're watching this movie on how to bone shad, it's not for, for retail purposes. It's because you caught a bunch of shad and you want to give it a whirl. This is the next most important bit of information that I can give you. Is that you want a piece of wood, firstly, after you get through this step and the fillets are nice and dry. Put your fillets on a piece of wood that's just a little bit, just a little bit larger than the uh, than the fillet, and don't put them. You want to put them in in uh, like orientation. So if you notice, we got shoulder here, shoulder here, belly here, belly here. All right. As you're working these things, it makes so much more sense when you're 60 pounds into these. To do it this way because it's you don't have to think about it it's repeatable completely repeatable so this is going to go in the fridge uncovered until it chills chills down a little bit they're warmer now because i've been working them for a while 
So we'll we'll find a board for those. We'll put these in the fridge. I'll call my mom so she can wish me a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jimmy. And uh, I'll get back to you in... Well, I'm going to be hammered by that point, too. All right, here we go. It's been about 40 minutes. 40-minute conversation with mom. You want to go kind of halfway between what would be the vent fin and the uh, pelvic or pectoral fin. Go on the north side of this row of bones. If you run your finger along the fillet this way, about halfway between. Make sure you're on the top of all those bones and cut straight down. Like that. And then go on the south side of this row of bones. If you run your finger along the fillet, you can feel them. And make sure you get on the south side. Lighting's kind of kind of not so helpful here. If you're cutting this and you feel resistance, you're in the wrong spot, my friend. Same thing on this side. Turn the fillet around and we will, we will, we will. So you can see the, the, the row of bones. They run here and they run here. All right, like, a, uh, like a tongue. You want to get kind of halfway up the fillet. It's going to be difficult to do with the camera in the way. We're going to get on the north side of that. Or yeah, there. We're going to liberate this loin in the center here. So you want to cut into the center. And remember what I was saying about not cutting too close to the tail. When you cut too, too close to the tail, when you cut the tail off too close to the tail, you run into resistance. You don't want any bones in this because it takes a really long time to do this. You get that, and you um, you notice I'm not cutting straight down. You want to cut in towards the center on both sides, in towards the center. And if you do it right, you won't have any bones in it like this. That's what I was saying about cutting too close to the tail. Bones kind of they they kind of go. Uh, wayward towards the tail that's why you don't want to cut it too close to the tail i, I obviously did once you get it liberated in order to great to get the uh the greatest yield you want this oh geez oh slippery you want this uh the silver skin in between these layers of flesh to be to be quite evident so that's a loin a boneless boneless loin right there and then we're going to go ahead and cut so this row of bones you can probably see right right up there we're going to go about halfway up the fillet we're going to get on the That's better, eh? We're going to get on the uh, north side of that towards the shoulder. We're going to cut straight down. And then we're going to get the, the 2333 in that groove. And we're going to run out, laying the knife down as we move the knife out. Right? Kind of sort of like that. 
if you feel any clicking, you've probably cut through some bone. So then we're going to go and cut on the south side of this strip of bones. Open it up with your finger like I just did. And then, then you see that it's all tendinous material. We're gonna get the knife. Check this out. These are all bones right here. See that? We're gonna get the knife. The pokey bit of the knife. We're gonna get it underneath those bones. And we're gonna make sure this part of the knife is underneath those bones. Right, and you see that the tip of the knife is way up here. Once you find that spot, it's real easy to run the knife out there. And not miss any. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful fish. All right, that's all bones right there. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. You see that? See the tendinous material there? I'm not gonna be able to show you exactly what I'm doing on this side because of the, the camera. There it is. Sweet spot. Sweet spot of the shaft. All right, that's all bones right there. That's all bones. All right, so I'll reassemble the ass end of this fish. I can do that again real quick. Probably not real quick with the camera in the way, but there we go. Yep, so here we go. This cut here, and we got. I'll separate them so you can see. Got that cut there. The the belt the the uh, the bones go up that away. We're gonna line like that. We're gonna turn the knife. Oh, we're clicking. And then we're going to after we feather that out we're gonna run this cut It's all bones right there. We're 
half done one fillet. And then, vivo, vivo, vivo. We're gonna go on the shoulder side of this cut right here. Kind of go high in the towards the shoulder or the uh, yeah the shoulder of the fillet. Like the right there, right there. That's where they go up. And then connect these two cuts. Get underneath this right here. It's all bones. That right there, my friends, is a is a boneless shad fillet. Not too bad, eh? All right, hang on a minute. I'll put these on the lid, and we'll do that again real quick. couldn't cook them tonight or after you cut them as uh, you're into wholesale or retail seafood or you've been awake since 1 a.m. now it's uh, 5 p.m. you'd want to lay them out on a piece of piece of wax or not wax paper uh, this stuff this stuff right here fold the corners up Fold that end up, and boom! Boneless Shad Filet, one of my favorite fish. In the top three. In the top three if they're, if they're uh, a lot fresher than that.
I can still make them edible, but wow. Yeah, that's about it. I thank you all for watching. Y'all have a wonderful day. Hey, thanks for watching my movie. Firstly, thanks for watching. If, uh, if you see any value in this, leave a comment, hit like, thanks, share, subscribe, all that nonsense. That's about it. Go, uh, go blink your lid. Cheers.